Oh, thank you for that. I was. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to both the Multipliers Leadership Podcast. We're already talking because we're ready to go. We are running and gunning. Um, I, we're here with our founder, Josh Foliart. And hey, we're privileged to be able to have our first coach on here today. We have Coach Deggs of the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Coach, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Joseph. I'm excited to be here. I really appreciate you guys having me and uh, what uh, great work you guys are doing. Coach, Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Yes, we are uh, honored, man, that you would say yes to, to being on this podcast. You've been a friend of Multiply. You've been a friend of mine for a very long time, which makes you old, and I'm just on your heels. <laughs> uh, you but, are. You know, I have just, I have really just valued the friendship that we carry over the years since 2004, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Where we used to the friendship since 04, the knowing of each other since probably 02. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And we used to run toleration phase. <laughs> yes. Yes. We were we were we were trying to figure out if we wanted to 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 stay friends at that point. And <laughs> man, what a story, what a story from from your life and the way that God was working in your life back then when you were here at the University of Arkansas. Um, Coach Dave Jorn was a part of that story. Dave Van Horn, um, you know, allowing me to be a part of the the team chaplaincy and and a part of that team, which that was such a special team. Um, you know, Toops and Wishy and all those guys that were born yeah. uh, of that time frame. Uh, Scott Hody. I mean, there, I, I go back, man. Long prime. Yeah. That uh, was a special time. Yeah. You know, uh, you and I, I guess it's, we're coming on 20 years of, of friendship. And I just want our listeners to hear, uh, man, this, this is a man who has um, not only living a story right now, but he's been living a story. For the past 20 years, that is a kingdom story. It's got his ups and his downs, and we'll get into some of that. But, Coach, most recently, I was with you and the team in Coral Gables, Florida, for a regional, which was somewhat of a miracle in and of itself, just being a part of that that regional. Uh, we've got Texas. We've got Miami. We've got Maine. That's a tough regional, but it was fun. We had a great time being there, um, but I know that you wanted the outcome to be a little bit different. Talk a little bit about this year, um, coming out of that regional, didn't didn't get what we hoped, but no, we all we I thought we played our butts off, Josh. I mean, we played great baseball, you know, top twenty five level baseball down the stretch, and uh, you know, it was a testament to stay in the course. And most people quit before the best part happens. And uh, we pride ourselves mm. on being uncommon, and you know, we talk about that all the time. And uh, the uncommon man goes nowhere. And or the common man goes nowhere. It's always the uncommon uh, that has a chance to to write a pretty cool story. And uh, you know, our big thing here is just outlasting people. And uh, there's biblical values and eternal values in that. And standing for something and and you know, drawing a line and and being man enough to stand up for what you believe and continuing to work for what you want and believe in. Uh, and working together unselfishly as a team and that we finally started to uh, reap uh, you know harvest from from living that life for the last two years with this group uh, and and we capture a lot of hearts and minds and imaginations and can't tell you the that amount of compliments that I got from all across the country of I love watching y'all's team play and y'all were fun to watch and we were pulling for you guys. I hadn't watched y'all all year, but we were pull, we were pulling for you. And it was true uh, because it was yeah. palpable and people could sense there was just probably a little something different about this group. And, uh, yeah. you know, we came from the depths of despair and, and climbed back up. We never quit. Uh, which is so easy to do, and it's very, very common, uh, you know. And and uh, look, there's days that you want to, but if you can just put it off to tomorrow, uh, that's just a great way to approach it, right? And uh, and we're, uh, you know, I was listening to uh, Rob O'Neill shot Bin Laden uh, in mm. the face three times, and. Uh, you know, he's talking about a best speech he ever heard, and you can write it on Freeze, one right? piece of yeah. You can write it on one piece of paper by instructor Eshelman, and, and basically said what you're about to try is people will tell you it's impossible. It's not. He did it, and uh, 
you know, there's, I'm going to push you and then I'm going to push you. And then I'm, after that, I'm going to push you some more. You're going to want to quit. And, and trust me, there's going to be hard days, but you just don't do it now. It's just emotion talking. Uh, do it tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, yeah. tomorrow. He said, the thing I love about accomplish any long term goal is, uh, you know, break it down into small segments. Just get to breakfast after that, get to lunch after that, get to dinner. And it's good to like quitting, put it off to tomorrow. And I think that like what sums up this team is they just kept showing up, man. Kept showing up. And you're you're literally one play away from beating Texas. John Taylor hits a bomb over the center field fence. Yeah. I don't remember who who the center fielder was who goes up and, and brings it back, but that was uh, that was a heartbreak moment. But you're there. You, yeah. If that ball goes over, you win that ball game and, and we might be telling a different story. Yeah, we heard what it. could be. Uh, but that's baseball, right? Uh, baseball. Yeah. I think it's what you do after that. And we still we put ourselves in a great position to win the game. Uh, Absolutely. But mm-hmm. it was Eric Kennedy in center, and he's a great player. And, and uh, look, big-time players make big-time plays when they have that's to. Right. And, and Texas is Texas for a reason. And right. we're also in that regional for a reason. And, and yeah, uh, That's right. You know, they know us and we know it. I don't, you know, just talking to their coaches, I don't think we're the team they wanted to face. And, and you take pride in that. And, uh, mm-hmm. but he robbed a three run home run. And then Dylan Campbell robs another, uh, another run oh, uh, off the batter. One of our best plays I've ever seen in my life in and, right field. Uh, that was yeah. Crazy. And I think we won 5 4 probably without that. But that's a lot of ifs and buts, man. And yeah, it's baseball, true. Uh, they made Coach, the plays, and so hats off to them. Yeah, Coach, I you tell you, me and a, me and a, our my, my family and our friends' family, we're in the middle of Jose's. We're all like standing up. We're all getting as into it as we possibly can. They think we're crazy, like, um, but at the same time, why, why are these Arkansans rooting? Yeah, why are they cheering for so so hard? Um, but we're cheering for not only you to win, but maybe also just as excited to see Texas lose, and um, we give them the credit. But <laughs> I get it. Being an Arkansas boy, I gotta at least say that a little bit, but for sure, but, uh, so hats hats off to him. Still, one thing I love when we get uh, back to Omaha, there's gonna be a sea of vermilion in the stands because people just they grab yes. say towards the Cajun. Yeah, that's good. Well, and you've done something so special because, and I've watched you and I've paid attention. I observe people like you. You're not that concerned with outcomes. Of course, no. wins are important in your line of business. But really, you you major on inputs and what yes. you can control. And I've watched the way you develop and train these guys in the fall and and these uncommon, unorthodox, extraordinary methods of training, um, you know, up early, up late. I mean, you really train. It's almost like a Navy SEAL boot camp. I mean, the way you treat these guys, you're like, it's not just about baseball. This is about preparing right. you mentally for life. Well, I want and that, our guys to know, you know, like you being our spiritual coach, I want I want them to know when they look across the field or, uh, you know, they get in competition after this uh, at the workplace or in business that you're you're mentally and physically and spiritually superior to to, uh, you know, your competition. And that's an edge in itself. And, uh, uh-huh. you know, Thucydides said superiority lies with he who is reared in the severest school. And uh, I think that's how we've held on to guys too, man, is it's tough here. And it, it creates that, that blood and sweat forges a brotherhood of mm. uncommonness and something that you want to be a part of. And uh, it is, it's, it's, uh, we do things a little bit outside the box, but, uh, you know, we have to be willing, Josh, to do things that we've never done in order to achieve things we never have. And I'm not a re- I'm not a outcome oriented guy. I'm an experience oriented guy, meaning I want you to have a great experience. And if that's in a game, if that's after this, if that's during a season, uh, I want you to be able to look back and look some of the most fun, if you think about it, that you've ever had in your life, you didn't realize it until about five years after because it may not have seemed fun. Right. Uh, but a lot of times, the best times of your life are camouflaged. And, uh, 
my job is to stay off of the the final outcome because that's usually insignificant uh, in terms of the impact. Hmm. Uh, it's always about the experience of of the uh, the 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 trip, the the you know what it's taking to get to that point. It's it's always all about the process, a journey, nation. It's always in the journey, and I want to have a yeah. great experience in that journey. Well, what goes into having a great experience? Those are the things that you really need to focus on. Mm. And, you know, learning what it takes to become a full grown man. That's part of it. You know, mind, yeah. body, and spirit staying on a full tank in those areas, uh, having a set of standards that, sh that you believe in and stand for. And what are they? Let's define them. Let's live them. Uh, setting, you know, setting really, really, uh, tough goals and working to get there even if we come up short let's set them and let's let's work to get there as a unit right so mm -hmm. it's about the experience for me it's never about the outcome and if i can make sure that the guys uh because look nobody's going to remember results are temporary your commitment yeah well to sure, that's, right. other, that's forever nobody's going to remember that's right. 350 is june literally nobody you yep. your mom and dad will remember that that's it <laughs> Exactly. But they're going to remember your commitment, your sacrifice, how hard you worked, how hard you played, and your your character and your unselfishness. That's the stuff people talk about when they yeah. have a reunion twenty years down the road. It's never, hey man, remember you hit three fifty? No, it's hey, remember that time we had to do this or we did that or it's always mm -hmm. those those moments, and that's experiential. Uh, that's not final outcome related. Mm -hmm. I I, I want to take our audience real quick behind the scenes for just a moment we're in the dugout we just lost our second game in the coral gables regional against miami great ball club but but the scene that i saw in that dugout because we didn't have to rush out there wasn't a game or anything right behind ours and i watched the team sit there and then and then i saw something i've never seen before i saw you father a group of men, in particular the seniors, you took your time and went to every single one of them, hugged their necks, squeezed them, let them cry on your shoulders, which they were. It was disappointing. Um, but at the same time, there was something being said that didn't even, it didn't need to be articulated. And and I'd love for you just to go into that moment, talk to us about that, because I, I would say there's not a culture in the country like the culture that you've created, where you're not just coaching a group of young men, you're helping to father a group of young men into the next season of their life. And that that's significant. That, it, you know, my son going to be a, a, a senior in high school and any son, any, I tell people all the time about the culture that you've created there. Uh, you know, if, if I'm a, a, a mom or dad sending my, my son to a program, yours would be the one I would pick. I and I was a little bit biased, but I've seen, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it up <laughs> close. I've seen it up close, uh, and I know it's special. But just take take them to that moment. What are you thinking? What are you feeling for those guys? Well, that's the hardest moment there is, right? And there's no script for it. Mm. And you try to put it off uh, even thinking about it because you know it's coming. And right. because, look, there's only one team that wins their last game. Right. And so I'd say that that moment's going to come. And, and look, trust me, I've done this long enough. There's a lot of those moments that you can't wait for and, uh, you know, that, that it's easy. But that moment was real and, and organic because it wasn't about the loss. They weren't crying or upset or, uh, you know, just sitting there in shock over the loss. It wasn't that. We'd lost plenty of games. It was the finality of losing out a brotherhood uh, that you'll never have again uh, on a daily basis. You will never gather that group up again for nine months and be together every day, all day, mm -hmm. and enjoy as much as you did. And that's where the... Uh, uh, Let's just call it what it is. It's a mourning process. Yeah. It's, it's the death of something really, really special. Yeah. And uh, 
You know, that's why guys have trouble when their career's over or they come back from a tour in Afghanistan or whatever it is. It's not it's not the uh the battles or the the competitions, it's the camaraderie and the brotherhood. And anytime you can be a part of that or help uh create that or or whatever it might be, it's uh it's one of the greatest feelings on earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coach, I think you're you're dead on when it comes especially for for men is that they are there's a deep desire for deep connection and friendship with other men and we're not always great at articulating that um as as a whole um but i i truly believe there's a deep longing that's there and 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 coach i can tell based on um for following you for a while but also um, your experiences um in really the coaching world you've had a lot of really good successes a lot of ups some downs as well can can you just tell us a little bit more of just your your own journey within that? Like, invite us into the story and and tell us just kind of where you've been this past, uh, you know, 15 years or so. Well, you know, Coach Rob used to say something, uh, he told me something a long time ago, is your, your 20s are for learning, your 30s are for editing, your 40s are for mastering, okay, uh, your fifties are for harvesting and your sixties and the rest of your life is for, for really giving back. And I think there's a lot of wisdom in that, right? Because I came up, you know, arrogant, egotistical, hotshot, know it all that, that was very tough to approach and was very transactional in everything that he did. It was always about what I could get my own hands on him. Super opportunistic, uh, just by nature, man, I'm going to look for an angle to become opportunistic. I just am. And I still have to fight that. Uh, but you know, you're learning, right. And, and mm -hmm. then you get a chance to kind of edit where you are and maybe reassess what's important. Uh, you're having a family by this time, they're getting older. Uh, but I was a little, uh, it took a little more editing on my part. Uh, you know, I drank myself out of in my opinion, one of the best jobs in the country as the associate head coach at Texas A&M for almost <laughs> six years. I worked for my best friend, Rob Childress. And, uh, you know, I always say there's two kinds of people in the world, those that are humble and those that are about to be. And I was that guy that was about to be. I, I, I still had some editing uh, to be done in my life. And so at the age 39, 40, uh, you know, I'd gone from interviewing for the head coach at Mississippi State and other places and winning championships in the SEC and Big 12, uh, Omaha, all of it, to literally, uh, you know, losing my family, losing my job, losing my identity. And and that's the danger of of uh, tying your identity to what you do instead of who you are. Is, is That's right. When you're running empty mentally, physically, spiritually, and you lose that identity, which you think it is, that's when you really can get drowned by the things of this world and uh, lust, alcohol, drugs, porn, uh, gambling. Uh, you're going to reach for the, the, the temporary things of this world because you're empty. And uh, that's where I was. And I lost my identity, lost our house, lost all our money, lost uh, you name it. By the time I turned 40, I'd gone from A&M to working at a feed mill uh, about 20 miles outside of town. And I uh, was unemployable, uh, really felt like damaged goods, and, and I was outside of the game 430 days, and, uh, you know, God used one earthly man to open a door, and uh, it was Tony Robichaud, the, the late head coach, uh, who's now in heaven, uh, here at UL, and he sat me down, he said, I, do, I don't care what you've done, I only care what you're going to do about it, and with that, Joseph, he gave me the, the most powerful force on earth, he gave me uh, a shot at redemption and uh, he gave me a second chance and that's what Christ has done for everybody is is he's given us a second chance through his sacrifice on the cross mm -hmm. conquering death and his ultimate resurrection where he's seated at the right hand of the father and intercedes on our behalf and uh, and so yeah God has a sense of humor because he took a drunk and put him in Lafayette, Louisiana the drinking capital of the world uh, to get him to quit drinking. And I haven't had a drink in 10 years. Uh, Come on, praise God. And, you know, it's it's uh, it's crazy. This is obviously a real cliff note version 
Uh, mm-hmm. But the, God has woven a story in my life that it, it's supernatural, and you have to have your eyes open to see it. Uh, and that's the number one thing the enemy wants to do is blind you. And, and I was blinded over a long period of time. But my eyes are open now, and I see the way that God speaks to me. And uh, I see, I'm going to show you all something, if I can find it. Uh, yeah. My wife sent me this a couple of nights ago. Mm. And if your eyes are open, you see stuff. Can you see this picture? Just a little bit to your left, Coach. Other way. There you go. I do see that yeah, picture. Yeah, yes, sir. That's in 2008, and that's my son, who's 23 now. Mm-hmm. But that is at the Oklahoma City Memorial. They were with me. Mm. I was at A&M. We were playing for a Big 12 championship in the tournament. And uh, we were in the Big 12 tournament, and we went and visited that memorial. But do you, can you see what's there behind him? I can see several things, yeah. There's a A&M 12th man towel. Mm. And at the very top of the fence is a raging Cajun flag. Well, now, what is that doing in Oklahoma City? Those two things right next to each other. And I get chills telling you that, but guys, I don't know, sir, that part of the story, he's never very good part of the John Credible. I just saw it this week. So in 2008, (laughs) I'm rocking and rolling. Nothing's a plan. The plan was already written. (laughs) The plan was written, and it's right there in front of us. Yeah. Wow. It gives me chills. You can't make this stuff up, man. And, uh, let, and let me ask you this, because you, you wrote a book. You talked about this is just the, the Cliff Notes version. You did write a book called 15 to 28. 28, Your yes. former number, your current number. It's all about your identity in Christ, the story. But my question is, a lot of guys would just want to move past that season and true. just just forget about it. But you chose to put it and memorialize it for the next generation. Well, um, I tried to, Josh. I tried to suppress it, right? Because part of you, earthly, is ashamed of it. And yeah, uh, God, God won't let go of that because that's not part of the deal. Uh, the deal is mm-hmm. you're going to stop drinking. I'm going to take you and put you on just a little bit bigger stage. Okay? Isaiah 43, one. All right? Uh, you are mine. I have redeemed you. I have summoned mm-hmm. you. I call you by name. That's right. Okay, so that's not part of the deal uh, here. And and he has taken what was broken, and he's using it to to spread his his word and advance his kingdom. And I wasn't going to tell that story, Josh, but I wind up at Sam Houston State, and the Lord opens a door for us almost to get to Omaha, and uh, we're doing crazy, impossible stuff, and... You know, I'm at the Florida State Regional and or Super Regional mm-hmm. and do a press conference that got viewed by 50 million plus people. Yeah, it did. And so when that happened, the shadows are gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Th- this whole thing now is, is about to get illuminated. Yeah. And uh, God said, he told me, he said, tell your story. And mm-hmm. uh, so I sat down in one month and... Uh, it was the month of October of 2017, and I wrote that book just from the art. And uh, use large font and a lot of pictures because I know I know people <laughs> people like myself in the midst of addiction. I need that book so they don't have time for a book. Uh, <laughs> get the but I will tell you what, guys, that, that's hit a lot of men and women right between the eyes. And, and the yeah. response I've gotten from that book, you know, I got my family back. I, I, I haven't had a drink in a year. Uh, and these are, I don't know these people, right? This is, uh, Mm. and so I tell my story, but there's just so many, uh, heavenly, just God things, man. You know, 15, if I, if my identity was baseball, I always hid behind 15. That was my number my entire life, anything. Mm. And when you're fired and out of the game, 430 days, you know, you don't have any bargaining power when you show up mid season and all they got left is number 28. And they hand me 28. I realized I spent 28 days in rehab. Uh, mm. You know, 
my name's Matthew. There's 28 chapters in the book of Matthew. Name's Matthew. Yep. Me and Kathy were married on the 28th. Rob Childress and I took over at A&M on the 28th. Okay. Uh, I quit drinking February 13th or February 28th, 2013. I was mm-hmm. still drinking when they gave me that number. I quit drinking on the 28th of February, 2013. Uh, and then Kathy's, the day I was hired at Sam Houston State from here in 2014, it was the 28th. And Kathy's devotional that morning before we even got a phone call came out at Genesis chapter 28, verse 15. And it mm-hmm. said, I'll be with you and watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, and I won't leave you until I've done what I've promised you. Oof. Man. And he has. He's brought us full circle five years at, at Sam Houston State. And one of my best buddies, Coach Tony Robichaud, has a heart attack and leaves us too soon, but left us a roadmap. And uh, they asked us to come back to this land. And uh, yeah. that's what we did. And that's that's why it's 15 to 28. And uh, it just well, has a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of meaning to me. Yeah. Well, Coach, what I, well, one, Thank you. Thank you for continuing to share your story and that you have shared your story. Um, and there's a lot of different directions I think that we could go. Um, I know that there are plenty that have their identity wrapped up in something that has nothing to do with who they truly are within Christ um, or also who may be at the lowest of low, just like you were. And so we'll make sure to both have the link to the the book in our show notes, as well as that uh, that press conference that did get, as you said, millions and millions of views. Uh, to make sure people can see that. It's powerful. If you haven't seen that, I suggest that you do that. Um, And you mentioned being able to to replace really a Hall of Fame coach and to shift shift gears there. Can can you just talk to us a little bit more about that? I mean, you're you're coming in, like, what did that really teach you about being able to to live a life with legacy? You said you were still even drinking at the time. There was a transition period that was happening. Um, But How did you really approach that and just leading through that change for yourself personally, but also for a team that that really was set up for success in a lot of different ways? So talk to us about that. Yeah, that's where the story really gets wild. And and if we had five hours, I mean, I could really, you know, Josh played a huge role in saving my life. And and the fact that I had rededicated my life to Christ in 04. And Josh, I never knew the Bible. And Josh taught me how to read the Bible and how to... uh, comprehend the bible and more than anything what the 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 blessing of retaining the word right Mm -hmm. and uh so i've retained a lot of scripture even through my darkest days in my heart it's just written on my heart and uh that got me through a lot and uh you know because there was a time joseph i didn't want to live anymore my identity was gone and uh i wouldn't have to sleep with my daughter just to fill her heartbeat and say, all right, I can make one more day. Kind of like quitting the morrow, right? Yeah, and, uh, one more day. And so I get here. I'm still living a lie. I, I basically, I just have another opportunity. Uh, I do finally get my family back. We we land in Milton. That was very humbling. That's outside of Lafayette. We couldn't afford to live here. We had lost everything. It was just too expensive. So, uh, you know, and Coach Rowe was just a very wise, practical man and full of wisdom and knowledge. And we would talk for hours and hours and hours uh, on end. And, you know, he told me a story one day about, uh, you know, a, a clean truck and a dirty truck. And, and he just said, look, dude, uh, if you if you wash your, your truck and you wax it and it's spotless and, and you're driving down the road and see a pothole, full of mud what are you going to do uh you're going to avoid that pothole uh but if you haven't washed your truck in a in a week and and you know maybe you have a couple of of spots on it you're probably just going to kind of go around it uh but if you've been out mudding all day and the thing's filthy anyway and you see that pothole what are you going to do not only are you going to drive through it you're going to seek it out and uh, that really resonated with me is, uh, you know, I got to get this truck cleaned up, man. And, and when I do, that that just kind of, you know, punched me in the gut because that's, that's, I'm an all or nothing guy. Yeah, and you're right. If if, if I am walking the walk, man, it's going to be a lot harder to surrender. And 
you know, the, the hardest part for me, and like I said, I was blinded. Uh, I couldn't quit drinking for God. You know, I spent 28 days in rehab. I couldn't quit drinking for my family, for my career, for anything. It wasn't until God put me right here. And, you know, the first team I, I was a part of here was midway through the season. We were terrible. It was 20, we were 23 and 30 and brought in some new guys the next year. And it was just the perfect personnel. I retained a bunch of guys. Uh, it's an incredible story. But I was looking around one day, and and I was talking to him, and and I realized, you know, his dad's in prison, and his mom's an alcoholic. His dad's an alcoholic. His brother died. Uh, his mom's been married five times. Uh, this while I'm talking, and uh, I thought to myself, man, I'm surrounded by a bunch of brokenness, and I'm I'm the chief broken one amongst all of them. And that's when I surrendered to something bigger than myself. And I just told myself that day, uh, February 13th, uh, or February 28th, 2013. Uh, yeah, February 28th, 2013, I just told myself I'm never going to drink again, and it's going to be because of these guys, and uh, I'm not going to let them down. And it, with that, I did something very important when you want to create change. I took a step of action. And it's kind of like faith without deeds, man. And uh, when I took that step, God grabbed me up, and uh, he took He took that burden from me. And I haven't attended meetings or anything like that. I just took a step of action, and he said, let's go. And, uh, you know, I refused to surrender. And, you know, it's uh, that team that I walked into that was terrible. Uh, pretty much a lot of the same guys and some new ones. They they had the largest turnaround in the NCAA the next year. And uh, God revealed himself that he does reward faith and sacrifice and obedience. And uh, That's good. we went from 23 and 30 to 43 and 20. We led the nation in offense. The same team that hit 260 the year before, we led the nation like 27 to 30 offensive categories and uh, lost to LSU in the regional championship game. And then in 2014, we became the first mid-major ever to finish the regular season as the consensus number one ranked team in the nation. And uh, just prove that, yes, with Christ, all things are possible. We were 58-10 and 10 and uh, almost won every game. Mm. What a story. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, what? I mean, there, <laughs> as you said, Coach, I think we could have a five-hour conversation because there's so much – no, we depth and go in riches direction. in there. Um, that's there. But Josh, why don't you lead us into that next next section as we keep moving forward? Coach, you you I've I've had the privilege of watching you up close and personal with the players of the past two seasons. Um but what have you learned uh about leading this generation of men? Mm. What what is it about I'm gonna tell you the biggest the, thing I've learned. Yeah, let's hear it. Is everybody says kids have changed? Kids haven't changed. The people responsible for those kids have changed. Wow. Our so standards for these kids have changed. Hmm. They're the same kids. They they still crave discipline and structure. They hmm. still want to be pushed. They still need to learn how to be disappointed. Hmm. They still need to learn accountability and discipline and trust. And it's up to us to teach them. And, yeah, you, some things you do need to learn and adapt to, like technology, okay? They have a different way of communicating. But big deal, right? Yeah. The accountability should stay the same, mm. okay? The belief in something bigger than yourself should always be there. Pride in, in, in your country and your family and, and where you're from, that should never change. And uh, I, I don't think kids have changed. I think what we demand and uh, out of kids and how we hold them to account and how we teach them has changed. And so I think we need to look inward as leaders before we look outward. I I think that's a it that goes right back to what you said earlier, Coach, of focusing on inputs versus outputs. Right? Mm -hmm. If I give the high expectation, man, that's the input that's expected. That's the direction we're going. That's the goal that we have. Um, and, and I think they're no, I think, um, you are successful because of those things, regardless of whatever the, 
end result is. And that's what I've learned from a very far distant seat, just watching you and your team is that um, those men are better after they leave your program. And that is something to be said um, mm -hmm. about being able to leave a legacy that has an impact that really you can't even quantify or know what the significance of that is. And so um, we, uh, we're desperately as a generation or maybe even just as a country, as a world, looking for other men that can invest into the next generation in a way that says, hey, the expectation can be high and you can meet it uh, because of the way that God's made you and wired you. And I see you instilling that within your people. And so I just find a lot of a lot of encouragement within that. And you've obviously learned a lot kind of over the the years. Um, you've had about uh, 25 different one liners. And I'm like, that's gold. That's gold. But I feel like I need to write all of them down. I need to listen to this again and, and start writing some more down. But um, I really, just how are you lear learning uh, just as a leader right now in this season? Like, what is it that um, is really stretching you or growing you? Because you don't, I mean, you said you're all or nothing. You don't seem like somebody that's just going to stop. Um, so tell me, how is it you're growing right now or as a leader right now? I think they're just striking a balance of realizing, you know, uh, I can see down to the bottom of the hill now and really, really trying to take some time to enjoy uh, what it is that I get to do, okay? And the balance with that, what would counter that, is still rolling up your sleeves and, and uh, maybe getting back to some things that you used to do and uh, when you were younger, you know? And uh, I think... Uh, you got to take advantage of every opportunity and like with the coaching change, I'm going to get back into some, uh, some different areas that, that I had done before, but had relinquished. And, uh, but at the same time, I'm going to take my time and, uh, you know, I'm going to enjoy the, the, the gifts that God gave me. And, and my mm -hmm. prayer is right out of Ecclesiastes, just dear Lord, just blessed. And may I enjoy the, the toils of my hands. Mm. And uh, he's blessed me and my family beyond belief just through our story and everything, but also blessed me with a job that, that is not a job. And uh, most people look at the clock and want it to move fast. I'm thinking of ways, you know, I don't wear a watch. Slow it down. Uh, I'm thinking of ways to slow it down. And, mm. uh, you know, so it's really struck, it struck me lately that uh, – you know, the, what are what are people going to remember uh, when you're done? And what is that legacy going to be? And is it going to be uh, how great you did everything and, and all of that? Or is it going to be how much you showed them and then cut them loose to go do it themselves? Uh, and mm -hmm. how much you taught them? Well, I, one thing that I love about... Uh, your ministry, and I'm going to say it like that on purpose right here, because you are what we call a multiplier. You're someone who is multiplying the great commandment, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You're teaching men how to do that, and the great commission and the way you invest into these men and, and expect them to go and be multipliers themselves, multipliers of a kingdom that's bigger than themselves. You know, I, I think I've heard you say it. If I've heard you say it once, it's been a hundred times. There's no greater honor than to sure. lay your life down for a brother, right? Mm -hmm. And that John 15 verse is marked on the heart of every player that comes through your culture. And, and, and you are, um, you're not just coaching these guys, you're, you're ministering, you're, you're shepherding, you're pastoring, you're fathering mm -hmm. uh, different ways and different times. And sometimes that's a tough assignment to strike that balance uh, because these are it grown really men. It, you, these are grown men. You've got a job to do. And you've got to pull out of these guys their very best. And you're playing against, you know, the, the I mean, I, I just, I remember the, you know, the, the scrimmage against LSU in the fall last year. I mean, you're not coming up against lightweights. You're, you're playing week in and week out the best in the country. Um, and, but you're doing it in a way that's transformational, not transactional. And mm -hmm. I, I wanted our audience to hear your story, but also to hear your way. The way of the way you go about doing your business and you position yourself to be used by the king 
on a daily basis. You're not perfect. Um, you never claim to be. You, you continue to grow uh, and learn. And I, I'm always floored by the humility of your coaching staff and the way that they approach me as learners. And I think that's the culture you built. Um, but I know our audience has so much to learn from guys like you. Um, no, doubt, sir. I mean, we're I'm we're flawed. I'm flawed. You know, it's so, and the that's part of it. That's that's yeah. part of it. I I I can be a hypocrite. I can be opportunistic. I you know I send daily. Uh, yeah. But I keep well, coming back for more, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, a real smart wise guy told me one day just stay godward stay godward stay god that's, that's right word well coach i love yes. at the beginning you said you know i mm -hmm. i tend to be opportunistic based on some of the past life and season uh but josh even just reclaimed and redeemed even some of that right now just a moment ago is you're opportunistic when it comes to point to the king and yeah um that's right. that is that is a big shift that's been um that's obviously taking place in your life and Coach, I, I think we could probably continue, but because of time, we'll have to wrap um, some of this conversation up. But um, I just want to say from from us, we are we are grateful for you to be able to be a part of the Multiply community and family. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You've impacted us and our community in several ways that, that most wouldn't know. Um, but you're definitely a friend of Multiply Global. And um, you had me start cheering for the Raging Cajuns, which I didn't know I was going to do, but but I'm full blown and, and with you now. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll just I'll just leave our audience with a couple of things that that even we took away be, or or that we had said during this podcast and that um, hey if you can put quitting off for one more day you can get a little bit further I think that was a good word um, good. and then I loved another thing you said coach you said if you you said the best times in life are often camouflaged and so <laughs> we'll just leave our listeners with hey God's got you in the season that you're at for a reason and for such a time as this. And so our encouragement is to continue to embrace that season. Hey, if you want to continue to follow us on multiplyglobal.com or to contribute to what we're doing across the globe, we'd love to have you guys do that. And once again, all the details will be in the show notes for anything else that, or for anything that was said during this podcast that you can maybe click on and pull something from. So coach, once again, thank you for your time. And now thank you guys all in a couple of weeks.